Now we're going to use Hive to process some Wikipedia data via a lab. What this lab covers is the same things we were talking about in the previous module, which is how do you actually use a Hive job flow uh, in Elastic MapReduce to process data. So in this lab, we're using the same data sets that we used in the Hadoop lab, which uh, consist of a set of files that contain Wikipedia XML records. Uh, each XML record is a single page from Wikipedia. It occupies one line of text. From that record, we can extract information like uh, the contributors, which is basically the username for whoever last edited the page, and also when that page was edited, so an edit date. Once we have that data, then we can do things like say, okay, who um, are the contributors that have done the most edits on all these pages recently? And because we have timestamps, then we can say, when do most of the edits happen? Before you can actually do the lab, you need to set up. So you, I'm assuming that you've already got your AWS account uh, and that you've created a uh, public-private key pair and you've downloaded that private key that you've got the Hive Lab and that Hive Lab's available uh, via S3. So you should just be able to download and expand it. Once you've downloaded it and expanded it, um, you'll be in a directory that'll have two files in it. The key one is a readme file and that contains all the instructions for running this lab. So let's go take a look at that. So you can see here uh, in the directory, there's two files. One's called readme and one's called hive-lab.hql. The hive-lab.hql file contains the Hive query language commands that uh, we use as part of the batch processing uh, that I demonstrated in the previous module. The readme file is something we can look at now. It contains step-by-step -step requirements uh, or prerequisites here, as well as what you need to do to actually run the job. The sequence is the same as what we went through in the previous module. In other words, you first got to set up a bucket in S3. Uh, then you can define a Hive job flow using the AWS console. So in your browser, go through this process. And then once that's running, it's running a batch job and you can monitor that job. You can also do an interactive Hive job flow. In the, and that's this step number four here where you essentially are doing uh, the same kind of steps for setting up a Hive job flow, but you're saying I want it to be an interactive session versus providing the script that you want to run in the input and output directories. Uh, and this lets you then interactively build up your Hive scripts as we've talked about previously. The commands that are in that hive-lab.hql file are the same ones that you'll see down here talking about being entered when you're in the Hive interpreter. Uh, so if you need to, you can just open that file up and copy the specific commands and paste them if you're having trouble following the steps that are here. We also talk about down here in an advanced section, again, how you can use uh, a proxying server to be able to view the actual Hadoop jobs using the Hadoop uh, GUI, which lets you view individual jobs and get statistics about those jobs. So good luck on the lab. And if you get stuck, you can go back and look at the previous Hive and Pig module. And in that video, you'll see me doing the same things that you'll be doing with this lab.